Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for inviting me to participate in this international forum, which uh, at least using Zoom allows us to continue to provide uh, mutual education to each other. I very much enjoyed the, the last, uh, last uh, talk. Um, so maybe I'm a, a little bit of a fish out of water in this, in the sense that my background is as a, a neurosurgeon. And um, I'm going to tell you about a collaborative effort that we have worked on uh, at the University of Pittsburgh uh, using uh, radiosurgery uh, to treat uh, um, now uh, choroidal metastases and uvule melanoma cases. These are my conflicts of interest uh, related to, to uh, prior relationships uh, and uh, um, some of the professional societies that I've uh, helped to uh, work on. So stereotactic radiosurgery may not be familiar to everyone. Um, it's now um, almost uh, 70 years old uh, as defined. And it was set up by uh, Swedish professor Lars Lexell in Stockholm uh, to deliver in a single session highly focused radiation by cross-firing individual beams uh, using a variety of technologies. He started out using a simple orthovoltage uh, dental x-ray device and then moved uh, in the 60s to using a proton beam in collaboration uh, with Bori Larson uh, and, uh, at the University of Uppsala. But eventually the gamma knife was developed in 1967. And while his primary interest was in the treatment of functional cases, that is uh, pain movement disorders, uh, he developed this uh, um, to be able to, uh, as it evolved, to treat a variety of things. So while it began as a primary role in the gamma knife for functional brain surgery over the course of more than 35 to 40 years, it's been widely used for tumors, vascular malformations, and in fact, uh, both benign and malignant brain tumors are the most frequent usages at this time. So what is the difference between radiosurgery and radiation therapy? Um, there are a variety of technologies that can safely deliver uh, focused radiation in a single procedure. And this has become possible because of huge advances, not only in, in, in imaging, but also in the mobilization of the uh, target uh, in order to restrict dose to the uh, lesion while minimizing uh, dose delivered to the surrounding tissues, which is where risk comes from. So in the delivery of this in a single treatment, the standard concepts of radiation therapy basically are not relevant, which look at the repair, reoxygenation, repopulation of a, of a tumor cell. Uh, and while there is no direct correlation between the radiobiological effectiveness of a single treatment versus fractionated uh, radiation, as a general example, um, an estimate of a four to one biological effect can be uh, used. So for example, a dose of 20 gray delivered by focus radiation using radiosurgery may be equivalent to uh, four times that effect of fractionated radiation therapy of 80, uh, 80 gray. So single session radiosurgery as we do it with the uh, gamma knife uh, um, and has been used worldwide in many centers. Uh, and I'm pleased to hear about the, the work uh, which has been ongoing in Athens for, uh, for many years. Now, uh, more than uh, 1.25 million patients have, have been treated. This has led to an enormous uh, uh, population of patients, chapters, books, uh, peer-reviewed uh, um, publications, and a wide variety of clinical indications have emerged based on uh, um, skull-based tumors, vascular malformations, functional problems, and of course, uh, metastatic uh, uh, cancer. As a general concept, it has uh, got a surgical training bias in the sense that everything is done on the same day. Imaging, planning, and treatment are completed, and this makes an enormous convenience for patients and, and families. Now, as you're aware, there are other options, and you will hear more about that, I think, today. Uh, generally speaking, a plaque therapy, a usage of conventional linear accelerators, uh, protons, maybe in uh, some uh, rare research centers, carbon ion treatment. As a general concept, this is done by multiple sessions over the course of time. It's been based on the traditional radiation co uh, therapy concept that cancer requires multiple hits in order to be able to reduce the radio, uh, to increase the radiobiological effectiveness and hit multiple cell cycles. But in the case of an eye lesion, you must be able to immobilize uh, the target. 
We believe that there's a significant uh, benefit of reimbursement of uh, uh, health care um, uh, costs go significantly down using this particular technology. Now, in the course of the brain, which is where I have focused, uh, there are um, in the United States uh, more than uh, 1.2 million patients diagnosed with metastatic disease. Many of these patients will develop uh, uh, cancer um, in the spread into the brain, uh, with the many th having uh, met in 300 to 400,000 new cases per year. Um, at our center, we've treated uh, more than 17,000 patients over the course of 34 years using the gamma knife, and certainly the largest number of patients that we treat are related to metastatic uh, cancer. Uh, and there's a wide variety of other indications depending on functional, vascular, and tumor cases. The general procedure is done yeah, with uh, the patient having eye by conscious sedation. Uh, uh, and as you're familiar uh, as ophthalmologists with uh, doing a retrobulbar block, we can immobilize the eye. We can then put on a stereotactic head frame. Uh, we do high dose imaging or high definition imaging using MRI at that time to define the uh, target and do dose planning uh, um, either with prospective or inverse uh, um, options. Uh, and we deliver a dose in a single treatment at the margin of the tumor of 16 to 20 gray, uh, meaning the maximum dose at some point is typically getting 32 to 40 gray in a single uh, procedure. So we then go to frame removal uh, and the patient goes home on the same day. So I'm gonna take a couple of minutes to show you the general process uh, of, the, uh, of the procedure. We start out with a retrobulbar block to paralyze the eye with a member of our ophthalmology uh, team. And once that's uh, and done and the eye is now paralyzed, we can then go and do the imaging. But first we must put on a stereotactic head frame, which we see here by putting on local anesthetic and then attaching this with guiding pins to the front and back of the head. It's very important to have uh, short pins in the back of the head in order to restrict um, uh, collision risks in, in, the, uh, in the future. We then do the imaging and the imaging is transported into the Gamma Knife Planning Center and we can see the target very well on MRI using long TR imaging, T1 with contrast and uh, uh, T2 uh, imaging. Once we uh, develop the uh, computer plan uh, and we do this relatively quickly because uh, we certainly don't want the uh, eye to wake up and start being able uh, to move during the actual time of treatment, we then develop in, co in collaboration with our oncology uh, colleagues a uh, uh, plan to do the uh, treatment. These are typically done with a patient's neck extended, um, uh, and that's because the target is very far in the front of the head, and uh, we want to be able to avoid collisions since the focus of the beam is going to intersect, obviously, on the, uh, on the eye target. Once the procedure is completed, uh, um, the patient comes out, we simply remove the uh, guiding pins, we put small bandages on the head. Um, at this point, uh, we observe the patient for an hour and the patient goes home. So I want to review a, a study that our group recently uh, published uh, um, uh, as a meta-analysis looking at outcomes related uh, to uh, radiosurgery and then comparison to, to uh, other uh, techniques using both fractionated radiation therapy, uh, protons, and, uh, and brachytherapy. Um, this uh, was uh, the first author, and this is uh, on uh, Dr. Tariq is uh, currently a first-year resident in neurosurgery training at uh, um, Mass General. Uh, he did this while getting his uh, PhD at Oxford um, and collaborated with our group uh, in putting together uh, this, uh, uh, this data, um, which led to a final review of 28 studies in the final analysis uh, with almost uh, uh, 900 uh, patients. Uh, the average age of the patients was 62, and uh, average margin dose uh, uh, was typically uh, um, in the 20s, um, uh, um, with maximum doses around 32. The important thing is, is this led uh, in these publications to local uh, tumor control in 93% of, uh, of patients. And in fact, we see uh, tumor shrinkage or regression in 79% of the patients with follow-up imaging uh, um, uh, uh, over time. 
Of course, there are risks, risks of uh, complications related to even very focused radiation. Um, and yet, compared to the other options, uh, um, these, I think, are relatively acceptable. Um, the risk of glaucoma, which we were actually concerned about would be much higher, um, has been relatively low. There is a risk of radiation-related retinopathy, or in part related to tumor volume. But the uh, need for a subsequent enucleation of these patients has been uh, quite low. If we add all of the potential complications in this, about 50% of patients reported one or more uh, complications. Um, vision acuity was stable uh, or improved in 24% of patients, uh, which uh, uh, is related, of course, to the severity of the risk uh, um, uh, um, of the uh, uh, or the status of the vision uh, prior to the actual uh, procedure. We did not find any relationship between the dose that was delivered and the tumor size. And in fact, what's happened over the years, there's been a gradual dose de-escalation um, because the doses that were thought to be needed um, in single session radiosurgery uh, were much uh, too high. And in fact, much higher than doses we would deliver for patients with intracranial uh, brain tumors. As an aside, we often find patients who uh, have not had an MRI scan before with uh, melanoma or choroidal metastases. And when we do the procedure to treat the uh, eye tumor, we find uh, brain mets at the same time on the same MRI scan. And we treat those on, on the same day. Um, there is no difference in uh, local tumor control uh, between gamma knife and uh, I-125 uh, plaque uh, therapy. Um, and in fact, compared to conventional fractionated radiation therapy using linear accelerators, there was improved local control with uh, uh, radiosurgery with the gamma knife. Here are three examples of, uh, of uh, lesions we've treated over the course of years. Uh, the uh, upper one is a 73-year-old male with a ciliary bottom melanoma, uh, which we now heard good evidence is, uh, is a bad prognostic feature. Here's a patient with a, a choroidal uh, papillary thyroid uh, met uh, with nice response over the course of uh, time. And here's a patient with a uh, uh, non-small cell lung cancer choroidal uh, met with a regression over the course of time. So of course, these patients continue to be followed by the ophthalmologist who's looking at visual acuity and be able to do um, a direct vision retinal studies, but we find the uh, MRI scan to be very helpful as well. So again, I want to reemphasize that a relatively small percentage of these patients need a nucleation, which of course has been a standard treatment at, uh, at, uh, at many centers. If we look at the overall survival meta-analysis at five years, and we've heard great data relative to the impact of uh, this uh, tumor, uh, depending on variety of molecular findings that are found. In this study, 76% uh, um, uh, of the patients ha had the survival uh, using gamma knife, uh, similar to what was protons and brachytherapy, and actually better than those patients who had already undergone uh, uh, enucleation. So the advantages of this compared to brachytherapy and enucleation and proton beam are uh, widespread, uh, reduced healthcare costs, admission costs, of course, of the nucleation, immediate blindness and cosmetic difficulties. Proton beam is very expensive, to, uh, requires uh, uh, centers. Uh, and for many patients in smaller countries, of course, transportation and expenses related to do that. So in general, uh, this uh, meta-analysis of all these various options uh, sh uh, it certainly indicates that gamma knife is a very effective, cost-effective care with non-inferior outcomes to more uh, traditional usage of techniques uh, using uh, plaque, uh, protons, or, uh, or enucleation. Um, uh, we are part of our, and the uh, coordinating center for uh, more than 37 worldwide centers uh, that are um, looking at outcomes in a variety of uh, uh, indications uh, who will undergo uh, radiosurgery. And we think that actually the uh, uh, involving centers who are able to do this uh, for ocular tumors uh, might also be able to give us a, a better long-term uh, data um, in, in the future. Mm -hmm. So thanks for requesting our participation in this study um, uh, and I'm, uh, the opportunity to present uh, um, someday I would like to get back to Athens. Uh, I must say that 50 years ago, my wife and I did our honeymoon uh, um, in, the, in Greece um, and spent a month there, including two weeks uh, in Crete. And uh, my hope is that eventually we might be able to get back there when uh, the healthcare issues uh, of the world uh, resolve. Uh, again, thanks very much for allowing me to participate.